Uh, welcome to the third day of the Great Debate Green Phoenix program. I'm Casper Hewitt, Director of the Great Debate, and I'd like to welcome you all here. I'd also like to say um, big thanks to Newcastle University and RCE Northeast for providing the venue for today. And also just to mention, as you'll see up on there, that today we have the launch of the Opal Water Survey. At lunchtime, Chloe Booth, who's, who's at the back there, is going to give a talk and tell, tell us a, a bit about that. And I'd, thank, I'd like to thank Opal very much also for sponsoring today. They're providing the lunch today, so, uh, so we've all got something to be thankful for there. Uh, <laughs> and uh, without more ado, I shall just hand over to Mo Lovett, who is going to chair the first debate of the day, The Legacy of Multiculturalism. Good morning everybody and uh, welcome to any first time great debaters and welcome back to everybody who's been here over the last couple of days. Um, as Casper said, we're going to be talking about the legacy of multiculturalism this morning on this fine sunny Sunday morning. Um, the concept itself gained prominence in Britain and indeed across many Western countries during the 1970s, very much as a kind of way of countering some of the racist ideas that had immediately preceded it. It, do, it did, and it does, um, by promoting and celebrating cultural differences. So among some of the questions I think we'll be covering this morning um, is whether multiculturalism in promoting the equitable status of distinct ethnic cultures, um, it has created a form of relativism that kind of prevents us from finding any universal values and whether or not indeed that's a good or a bad thing. Um, uh, we're also going to talk about what that legacy is, whether multiculturalism has united people or whether it has divided them, whether it hasn't had that impact at all. Um, and with us to debate these matters, we've got uh, four diverse, intellectually diverse uh, speakers. Uh, on my uh, far left is Amir Saeed, who is a senior lecturer at the Centre for Research in Media and Cultural Studies at the University of Sunderland and is programme leader for the BA in Media, Culture and Communication. As well as teaching, Amir's research interests include race and ethnic studies, media power, and 9-11 and the media. Uh, on my immediate left, we have Diane Mavrolion, uh, yes. <laughs> who is a polymath, who is currently working as a filmmaker and as a radio producer presenter for Resonance FM, which is 104.5. Oh, okay. is that right? yes. <laughs> She's also a contributor for Confluence magazine, South Asian Perspectives, and is currently doing research for a feature documentary on the impact of globalisation on the hereditary musicians of the Tar Desert in Western Rajasthan. So I'll come to you, Diana. On my immediate uh, right is Oscar Watson, who is Director of Intercultural Arts, which is a development agency for culturally di diverse arts in the northeast of England. Um, Intercultural Arts is a charity that was set up to help people from other cultures who are looking to work in the arts in the northeast of England. But the agency also supports large organisations in the region who want to understand the needs of minority communities. And then finally, last but not least, on my um, far right is Susie Dean, who is a writer and a journalist who regularly contributes to a number of publications including Free Society, Spiked and Open Democracy. As well as having written widely on subjects such as freedom, democracy and multiculturalism, Susie is currently researching the relationship between freedom and alcohol. So welcome to our distinct panel. And um, <laughs> Amir, I think we'll start with you. Yeah. I, I, I probably won't need the mic, I've got a very loud voice. Is that okay? Yeah. Is it okay if I stand up? It's just that I feel dead nervous sitting down. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, cheers. Just a, a, the reason I, I like standing up, right, is just that I've got a bit of a stammer. And if I think if I, if I sit down, I stammer more, whilst I can wave my hands and stuff like this, and I don't seem to stammer for some strange reason, right? Like, Casper's just ran out, okay, which is just as well, okay, because I, I was going to hit him, because Casper said to me I wasn't meant to do a talk, right? Uh, and uh, I've just, in the last, I, I went to the toilet there and I just prepared a talk as soon as I, as soon as I, as the best I could from a chapter that I've got coming out in a book on multiculturalism. So what I'm going to try to do, is quickly what you call go through the sort of the base of multiculturalism and then try to give a personal perspective on it if that's okay, right? Right now, the people right now multiculturalism is it's it's a very contested kind of concept and it's also a concept which people love to criticise, right? Okay, 
Whether on the left or on the right, the on the left people want to criticise multiculturalism because what they basically say, right, is if you look at all the kind of research on it, right, what they basically say is that what multiculturalism basically does, it, 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 it tries to what you call highlight differences. That's what it basically does. It tries to highlight differences as a way of saying, oh, it, 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 that's what that's what these communities want. So, for example, way back in the seventies, you had groups like you know the sort of uh, Black Workers Association. By the 80s and 90s, you had the Indian Workers Association, the Pakistani Workers Association, the West Indies Association, all competing for funds. So basically what happened, the, 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 one, one of the reasons why the sort of left don't like it, is what's really happening is that if you want to, if you want to be, if you want to think of old kind of Marxist uh, 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 concepts, the working class is getting divided. That's what's basically happening. So people are basically saying, people are fighting for pots of money, basically, right, okay. And the real issue of, i.e., inequality in society doesn't really get challenged. So that's why the left, even now, are more and more kind of uh, suspicious of this concept of multicultur multiculturalism. The right, on the other hand, they obviously, which you call, uh, uh, the, the sort of right-wing commentators and uh, 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 political commentators, etc., they seem to think that the multiculturalism is a threat. It, 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 ruin, it, it kind of erodes so-called core values, whether these values be religion, nationality, family, etc. That's what they seem to think. Okay, now, I th it, both of these, you know, both of, so both of them, in one way or another, are actually challenging this concept of multiculturalism, right? Okay, but I mean, I think, personally, I find that kind of both kind of uh, uh, arguments a bit strange, right? Okay, because what do we mean? by concepts like culture or national identity. What do we, I mean, these are very, very ambiguous terms. So, I mean, for example, if, if I walk out right now in Newcastle last Sunday there, you tell me what English means. You know, there what you call definitions of English might be completely different from 15 miles down the road where I come, well, where I live right now in Sunderland. You know what I mean? So what do we mean by these sort of debates and what tends to happen is that certain groups get, get stigmatised. So I would argue that in the last 10, 15 years, the actual, uh, what ten, what's been happening in a lot of the debates about multiculturalism, right, okay, is if you look at a lot of the political commentators, is that now what they're arguing is that multiculturalism is, is great, it's wonderful, it's, it's brilliant, but the main, the main problems for multi, the main threat to multiculturalism is not, it's not all minority groups, it's one particular minority group i.e. Muslims, now, whatever, whatever we sort of mean by Muslims. So you've had people like Norman Lamont, Margaret Thatcher, t attacking Muslims from the right, saying they're not doing enough to integrate, that they're not doing enough to, to challenge terrorism, that they have barbaric old-fashioned values, etc., etc., right? Then you have people on the left even challenging and, 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 and targeting Muslims as well, you know, claiming that what you call the, uh, the, 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 the misogynist, they sort of don't believe in uh, 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 women's rights, etc., etc., right? And I kind of find all this really, being a be, well, I am not religious, I'm not religious, but I, I find this really, really quite disturbing, you know what I mean? Because I'm seeing, like, I'm seeing my kind of background being questioned, but the crucial thing that I think about all, all these debates with multicultural, multiculturalism is that the crucial thing that does not get challenged is why do we have inequality in society, right? Okay, why do we have it? 